This is the first section of chapter five, which is the traveling salesman problem. And this section is about the classical and practical traveling salesman problems. So what is a traveling salesman problem? Well, it can be thought of as basically a problem where we want to visit every vertex or node in a network starting and finishing at the same vertex. Now, this problem is slightly different to the Chinese postman problem, where we want to traverse or cross or go to every arc, although we want to start and finish at the same vertex. So a traveling salesman is about visiting every vertex. The Chinese postman problem is about tra traversing every arc. Now we're going to look at the difference between the classical traveling salesman problem and practical traveling salesman problems. So in the classical traveling salesman problem, or any problems in, uh, of this type, each vertex is visited only once. Now in a practical traveling salesman uh, problem, each vertex is visited at least once. Now, classically, we want to try and get this type of solution where we visit every vertex once. But in reality, it may not be practical to do that. So we may have to visit some vertices more than once. Now, the reason that is, is because there is no efficient algorithm to solve this problem. So we haven't got an algorithm that's going to give us this every time. We may only be able to get something like this by a, a, some sort of algorithm or by inspection. OK, now we've got a couple of definitions that we need to go through. Definition of a walk and a definition of a tour. So starting with a walk, a walk begins at a vertex, traverses arcs and ends at a vertex. So here's a graph here. So a, a walk might start here, go along this edge here, go to here. And that might be it. That might be our full walk. Or it might be that we start here and we go along these vertices here and finish here. OK, so that's the definition of a walk. You start at a vertex, you traverse some arcs and you finish at another vertex somewhere else. So now a tour. So a tour visits every vertex, unlike a walk, and it could uh, visit uh, a vertex more than once and returns to the starting vertex. So, for example, here, a tour might be starting here, going along this edge here in these edges, visiting these vertices here, and in this vertex, and then I visit this one again, this one again, and this one again, then return to the starting point. So that's an example of a tour. Yeah, so think about if you go somewhere and you go on a tour, you want to visit all the places, and you might visit some places more than once, and you want to come back to where you start. So this is an example, start here along this edge, and you see that some of the vertices get visited more than once, then we end up back where we started. Now, if every vertex is only visited once, then it's a Hamiltonian cycle. Now we're going to have a brief look at upper and lower bounds. OK, so since there is no efficient algorithm to solve these traveling salesman problems, we want to know how good our solution is. So when we work out the weight or the length of um, the minimum uh, distance that would need to be traveled to visit every vertex and, and uh, end up back where we started. Um, one way to find out how good our solution is, is to be able to work out an upper bound and a lower bound to our weight, the total weight of our um, tour. And then if we have these numbers, we know that the, the closer our solution is to a lower bound, the better it's going to be. And actually, if we get a solution which is the lower bound, we know that's an optimal solution. But the key thing is, is that lower, closer towards the lower bound is better. So on this example, we need to create a table of least distances for the network opposite. So this network here. Now a table of least distances is slightly different to a distance table. It is a table of the shortest distances between vertices. And we find these distances 
by inspection. So for example, if I want to find the least distance between vertex B and C, so it's not just the 27 that's here, that's not the least distance, it would be this 11 plus 13, which would be 24. So that's shorter than 27, and it's shorter than this root here. We've got the eight, the 14, which is 22, plus the 18 here, which would be 40 going this way. So we'll put the vertices into our table. So we've got A, B, C, D, and E along the top and the side. Now, remember along the leading diagonal, we're gonna have dashes. And because there's no directed edges, no directed arcs, it's going to be symmetrical. So once we've filled in the first row, that goes in the first column, second row goes in the second column, and so on. So let's start by finding the shortest distance between vertex A and B. Now that's going to be 11 because whichever other way I go, so this way here would be 40, so that's going to be 11. So we can put 11 here and 11 here. Then the shortest distance between vertex A and C, well, again, that's just going to be 13. If you go any other way, it's going to be more than 13. So we can put 13 here, 13 here. Between A and D, now between A and D, this way is 19. That looks like the shortest distance. This way is going to be more than 19 uh, because that's already 31. That'll be 45. And even going this way, um, A to D, that'd be 13, 27, 40, that'd be 48. So it's got to be that way. A to D will be 19. And then A to E, now let's have a look at which ways we can get from A to E. So this way here, which would be 13 plus 18, that would give us 31. Now any other way, so this would be 19 plus 14, um, that will give us 33, so that's going to be longer. So this is going to be the shortest route, A to E is 31. Then we'll move on to this one here, B to C. Now this is 24, this is 27, so 24 is the least distance. So that'd be 24 here, 24 here. B to D, well that's basically going to be that one there, the 8. So eight, and then B to E. So get into this vertex here. So choices are the 27 and the 18, or the eight and the four, or the 11, 13, 18. Well, this is gonna be the shortest. So uh, eight plus 14, which is going to give us 22. So 22 here and here. Then moving on to vertex C, so C to D. C to D, so it can either be 18 and 14 going this way, which would be 32, or this way, 27 plus 8, that would be 35, or even this way, so that would be 24 plus 8, this would be 32. So actually there are two least distances from C to D, going around this way, C, A, B, D, or um, C, E, D. But they're both 32. So 32 is what's going to go in here. And then lastly, we want C to E on this way, uh, row of the table. Well, that's just going to be the 18. 18. So can you see if we fill in the rows and columns at the same time on this non-directed network, it fills up very quickly. And basically, we've only got one more to do, and that goes in here. So D to E, E to D. And I can see from here. And that's just going to be 14. So 14 here and here. So that completes our table of least distances for this network. So the, this network on the right, which is this one here, shows the distances in kilometers between the central sorting office S and six post offices A, B, C, D, E, F. The table shows a partially completed table of least distances Complete the table of least distances for the network on the right, stating your shortest route for each of the entries. Now, since this is not a directed network, then we can fill in rows and columns simultaneously. Right, let's start going from S to A. Now we've got 13 that way, 10 this way, 8 this way. 
So the least distance is eight. So we'll put that here and here. Then we'll move from S to B. So S is here, B is here. So I've got eight this way. I've got seven this way. These ones are going to be longer. If I go this way, even around that way is 10. So seven is going to be the least distance. Seven here and here. Now we're going to go from S to D. So S is here, D is here. So this is 15. This way here is 14. Any other direction is going to be longer than 14. So that shortest one is 14. So we'll put those in. 14 there and 14 there. Then from S to E. So S here, E here. So we can go this way. That would make 28. This way would make uh, 19. Going this way is going to be longer. So this is going to be the shortest route. Any other way is going to be longer. So it's going to be 19. So that's all the connections with S done. So now we'll move on to this row here. We've just got one to fill in between A and C. So A is here. C is over here. So this looks like the shortest one, 7, because this will be 15. Any other way is going to be longer than that. So 7 is going to be my shortest. So 7 here and 7 here. Now, because these tables are symmetrical, when we come in to fill this entry here, it's already here. Look, E and B is 19. So E and B, we can just fill that in. It's already in the table. OK, but we could check ourselves to double check between E and B. 19, that's going to be this way around here that gives 19. Right. And then between B and F. So B is here, F is here. So it looks like this one's going to be the shortest one here, five. So we can fill in the five there and the five down here. That just leaves uh, one more entry, actually. That's between D and F. So D is here and F is over here. So this way would be 20. This way here would be 27. And then, yeah, actually the shortest route. So this would be 20, 27, 12. 14, 19. So again, all the way around here is quicker because D to S is 15. D C S is only uh, 14. So it's going to be one less to get to from D to S going this way plus the five. So that will give us um, 19. So there we go. Here's our table of least distances completed. So you should now be able to do exercise 5a on pages 106 to 107. Just a quick recap. Uh, and that is something that we looked at in the uh, first example and the second example. And that's a table of least distances is the least distance between vertices. This distance is found by inspection.